Hey, good evening, Maximo. How are you? Good evening, teacher. How was your day? I, I was good. Yeah? Yes, I follow. Um, I am working in the in the refrig uh, cuarto refrigerado refrigerator refrigerator room. refrigerated room mm -hmm. ah, okay 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 mm -hmm. i i supervise the work in metal mechanica metal okay. mechanic and, and this uh, is a, a new construction yes yes teacher yes yes mm -hmm. for a restaurant no, no no for store food ah okay mm -hmm. but not for a restaurant so for no. for a house It's a big uh, household, household. A big household. Correct. It's uh, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, for a refrigerator room, it has to be a very big house. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay, there. The dimension are um, 23 mm -hmm. meter, meter uh, of large mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 16 meter mm -hmm. uh, wide wow mm -hmm. huh? it's, it's like big it's, mm -hmm. it's big it's uh -huh. big uh, yes and uh, and 5.50 meter to height Alto. wow yes mm -hmm. No, how, five meters high. A uh, five point five meter of high. It's like two floors. Mm -hmm. like yes, two. yes. Ah. Uh -huh, two floors. Uh -huh. And it's not for a business. No, uh, it's for a business. Mm -hmm. It is for a business. See, si, it is for business. Ah, uh -huh. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought because I said mm -hmm. no. Uh huh. For for a house is is too much. Sí. Uh, it is uh, the my chief uh, are thinking to rent the middle square. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the business model. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's not a bad idea. Also, the other the other is um to have a a dry age, refrigerated, not mm -hmm. not exactly like the fridge, or like the freezer, but uh with the control for humidity and temperature. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because many restaurants, yeah, uh, well, not many here in El Salvador, we don't have a lot of restaurants that have dry aged meat. The meat for thirty days, eighteen days, twenty one days. Normally, only the meat fresh, and that's it. But mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's a good idea that the for the business, but it's a lot of investment. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a lot of money for 23, 16, 5. Is I can imagine it's a lot of money, yes. mm -hmm. so and a lot of work because when the space is big, you have to be more careful for the the cold doesn't escape the air can circulate this is yes. the mm -hmm. most difficult part because when you have the refrigerated rooms the idea is no cold here and hot here the idea is yes yes mm -hmm. everything the same temperature the same temperature correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very delicate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how long is the project maximum mm, i think i finish in November. 
in November. So November. it's like three mm -hmm. weeks to build. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In November. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I uh, I began in July. Oh wow! Uh, no, 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 I be I began in uh, August first. August first. August first. Uh huh. September, October, no, three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three months. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine all the electric and the fans and the, the yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember I saw that they had um. They maybe not this big, but they built one in um here in San Salvador, in near Los Planes, near Planes de Rendero. They built one of these uh, refrigerated rooms for mushrooms. Ah, okay. Mushrooms. Yes, and they have mm -hmm. mushrooms in those areas. Mm -hmm. Where where was planted? The mushroom in the refrigerated room they had the the mushrooms to grow for the temperature ah uh, okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh let me good see evening. Can... good evening good evening good evening morena mm -hmm. how are you ah yes it's so a little bit sick oh what happened I don't know, but maybe a virus, a flu, sore throat. And the flu for me is was very um frustrated because my eyes cried in all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's not good for me that kind of virus. Okay. Yeah. That is why I feel very um terrible with that but i have to continue with everything okay yeah mm -hmm. there's that... nothing mm -hmm. yeah tell me no 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 i i was going to uh tell victor that the 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 article is in the link in the chat oh, yeah. because victor was asking about the the mushrooms that here oh. okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the I remember that I that I read that before El Salvador used to import a lot of the mushrooms, mm -hmm. Guatemala or other countries. And so this business say, okay, what do we need? You need a refrigerated room. And they built a refrigerated room and they built and they made the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Because this is a uh, Maximo's business. And he this is why we were talking about it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. But more you said that your eye. Is crying or you is red or, or what happened with your eye? I don't know, but sometimes when I had a flu, I only have runny nose, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, runny nose and sneeze and cry my eyes because the the same flu. But I I drunk uh some pill um so hours ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and now you feel better. I just left working at the same time, working for um a very long for 30 minutes, and I just left I landed in my bed and I approached the Avela. Okay. So, yes. Yes, I'm and I, I took a little nap for a moment. Uh, and I feel better. I feel better after throwing my pills. Okay. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Thank you. Julissa, are you ready for today? Okay. Maybe Lisa. not. Uh-huh. She's not able to connect. Okay. No problem. Well, let's go ahead and get started. That way we have enough time to make sure that we finish the activities. As you know, today is, yesterday we finished unit five and today we're going to do the test. The test okay. to this level has four sections. We're going to have four sections. Section number one is listening with four questions. 
there are two listening parts. Um, listening one, part one, has two questions. And then listening part two has two questions. So each one you're going to listen and answer according to the information from there. Okay? So two listenings and four questions. Then in the next part, we have a reading. You're going to read the article and with the information from the article, you're going to choose the best way to complete the sentences or identify the meaning of the vocabulary. So question number one and question number four, we need to complete the sentence. But question number two and number three is your comprehension of the text, is your comprehension of the vocabulary in the article. You read it and then identify it. Okay. Section three, the part three here, we're going to use the words that we have. Here we have several different words. Then we're going to use them to answer what is the sentence. This sentence, what is it? Is it a excuse, prediction, suggestion, warning, or reaction? Then you only have to identify the type of sentence it is. In part two, we're going to use the verb in parentheses, only the verb in parentheses, and we're going to write it in the correct form for the passive. We're going to write it for the correct form for the passive. And if you need to add more words, you add more words. If you need to change the verb, you change the verb. But only write that part, the verb, in the correct form. And that's part two with four questions as well. And the last part is here where we're going to join sentences. We're going to take two sentences that they give us and we're gonna make them into one. Okay. Do we have any questions before we begin? Not sure. No. Not for a while. <laughs> Not for a while, yes. It's a lot of exercises. <laughs> No problem, a lot of exercises and you just need the time to do it, okay? No questions. Okay. No. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna separate, that way you don't interrupt each other. And I'll give you, let's say 30 minutes, that way you can have enough time to do the listening, enough time to check. And then we come back in 30 minutes and we check the answers to make sure that it is clear and there are no questions. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's go for a moment, 30, okay. Good night, teacher. Hello, Anna. Wow. Okay. We're ready? I'm here. Late, but I'm here. <laughs> yes, I'm surprised. Yes, ready. Okay. So we are doing the exam in this moment. So we, we have 30 minutes to complete the exam. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so let's review some of the videos that we have while others are working on the platform. We're about to begin a new course. We want you to keep on learning. So stay and watch the first intro video we have for you. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so yeah, I'm, I listened I'm sorry. in. <coughs> What's so I'm interesting sorry. about this old campground? No problem. It isn't scary, is but it? But I, I didn't understand. We are going to make this exercise alone or with a group? You have a partner. I put you with a partner. Don't worry much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I was alone. <laughs> okay. It's for the internet problems. Mm -hmm. Scary stories freak me out. Well, don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that. Just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. Was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over. But she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then, I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that. Thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore. Really? But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night.
So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello, Alba. How are you? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Are you okay? Yes. All and right. You? Good, good. Uh, right now we're doing the exam and we have, you have 18 minutes left to finish the exam for unit five. So we're doing the final exam. I Okay. I'll put you into the group that okay. we work with them. Okay. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? This time on the study time classes, as soon as you watch the explanation, you will be asked to write some examples. Time clauses. Before I had my first job, I was really immature. After I got my first job, I became more mature. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. The moment I moved away from home, I felt like a different person. As soon as I got my own bank account, I started to be more responsible. Until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. By the time I graduated from high school, I had already started working. Before we begin, it is important to remind you some facts about classes. Number one. All clauses require a subject and a verb. Number two, a time clause is a dependent clause. It can't stand alone. It must be connected to a main clause. Number three, the time clause can come before or after the main clause. And finally, when the time clause comes before the main clause, a comma separates the two clauses. Now let's look at the first sentence. Before I had my first job, I is the subject, had is the verb. If you read, before I had my first job, it makes no sense. It is because it can't stand alone and needs a main clause to make sense. In this sentence, the time clause comes before the main one and because it comes first, we used a comma. Moving on, we have subordinating conjunctions. What subordinating conjunctions do? They provide a necessary transition between the two ideas in the sentence. This transition will indicate a time, place, or cause and effect. But of course, this time, 
we will concentrate on time. Here are some examples. Once the lights came on, we all shouted with joy. After I got my first job, I became totally independent. Before we finish, we will explain the meaning of these conjunctions. Once, as soon as. When one event happens, another event happens soon afterward. The moment, a particular point of time when two events happen together. Until, to that time, and then no longer. By the time, one event is completed before another event. Now that you know about time clauses and subordinating conjunctions, we want you to tell us about a turning point in your life. You may use any from the chart. We're about to study some adjectives which will help you talk about behavior and personality. Ambitious, argumentative, carefree, conscientious, naive, pragmatic, rebellious, sensible, sophisticated. Can you tell us how you behaved in your teens? In your 20s, how do you behave now? Try to be as honest as possible. Plus hard, plus past participle. Should you have learned English before? Stay and learn how to express regrets and describe hypothetical situations. Page 75, exercise eight, grammar focus. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Expressing regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Describing hypothetical situations. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. When we want to express regrets, we need to follow the rule. Subject plus should have plus past participle. It's important for you to know the way you should have to speculate about or imagine things that did or didn't happen. For example, I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. When you want to describe a hypothetical situation, we need to use this rule. If plus subject plus had plus past participle, comma, subject plus could or would have plus past participle. Notice the use of could or would have shows what didn't happen. For example, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have bought my own apartment. In other words, I didn't buy the house because I had no money. Can you put yourself in the following hypothetical situations? Write them on our discussion box. And a promotion. Hi, to wrap up this section, we want you to work on your pronunciation. Please listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. You may complete these sentences and practice them in class. Pay attention to the reduced form of have and been.
Ready for our next intro video? Watch it and take notes. Hi, this is Jacob with Campus TV. Today we're at Choice Cafe on University Drive. I'm talking to the owner, Lily Chen. Choice Cafe opened two years ago. Since then, students have been lining up for coffee and food. Why is Choice Cafe so successful? Let's find out. Thank you for agreeing to speak with me today. Choice Cafe is popular on campus. Yes, the cafe is doing very well. What's the secret to your success? I've been very lucky. And I have great customers. But it is hard. I think there are several reasons we do so well. We're popular because of our location, of course. For a cafe to succeed, it can't be off the beaten path. It needs to be where people can find it. You don't have to walk far. It's convenient, <laughs> right next to campus. But that can't be the only reason. After all, Central Cafe closed last year, and it was just one block away from campus. Did Choice put Central Cafe out of business? Yes and no. We were definitely in competition with each other, but Central Cafe didn't have comfortable seats. In order for a cafe to attract customers, it should have comfortable chairs. Our cafe is famous for its cozy atmosphere. Look at those chairs. The people can come here to relax, drink their tea or coffee, and study or read. Do you encourage people to stay a long time? I absolutely do encourage people to stay. I think that's the reason why they keep coming back. They can read, do homework, meet their friends. And during this time, they drink two or three cups of coffee and have a pastry. What about the food? Our food is made here, fresh every morning. We have a strong takeout business. People order food to take home or to eat outside. Outside? You mean on the grass, on campus? Anywhere. We do have tables outside too, but people do eat on campus. It's really pretty there. But it's nice to sit inside too. The atmosphere is great here. Talk about that for a minute. The lights, the music? Music is key to a cafe success. You need to make sure you have good music. I'm not an expert. I mean, I don't know much about music. But people who work here are students. They're tuned in. They know what's popular. So I let them choose the music. And people like it. Yes. And since I want to encourage people to meet their friends here, chat, read, so on, I make sure the music's not too loud. I mean, we can hear each other just fine, right? Right. Well, Lily, thank you. I've really enjoyed learning more about what makes Choice a successful cafe. You're welcome, Jacob. Come anytime. For Campus TV, this is Jacob signing off. In order plus infinitive. Example. In Hi. For you to be fluent in English, you need to keep up with all the lessons. So stay and learn how to describe purpose using infinitive clauses. Describing purpose. Infinitive clauses. To run a popular internet cafe, it's a good idea to have late opening hours. To establish a trendy restaurant, it's important to have fashionable servers. In order to establish a trendy restaurant, it's important to have fashionable servers. Infinitive clauses with four. For an athletic center to be profitable, it needs to have modern exercise equipment. For a shopping mall to succeed, it has to have a convenient location. In order for a shopping mall to succeed, it has to have a convenient location. To describe purpose, we may do so by using different types of infinitive clauses. We may use the infinitive clause to plus verb. For example, to succeed in business, you have to. Notice we began our sentence using to, followed by the verb succeed. Or we may use in order plus infinitive. Example, in order to succeed in business, you have to. We may add in order, but it's optional. If we omit it, the structure stays the same. 
The other way to describe purpose is by using infinitive clause with for. For plus noun plus infinitive. For a business to succeed, it has to. Or in order plus for plus noun plus infinitive. In order for a business to succeed, it has to. Again, we may use in order, but it is optional. The structure stays the same if we omit it. Ready? Look at the picture of a coffee shop. For it to stay popular, what three things should be done? Type your suggestions on our discussion box. If, if some of them are unable, uh, available, the next people on the list to appear instead. Mm -hmm. Is. Mm -hmm. Is invited. Okay. okay. Miss is. And you? It's Alexandra? okay. It's okay? Yes. Yes. Click in. Can MBR? we put MBR? Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh. Almost. <laughs> Maybe are invited. The next people, mm, plural. Try again. Okay. okay. <laughs> the next people, plural. Okay. A, A B, C, the part D. I know C. Mm -hmm. C. Okay. Join the sentences. Sí, quizá lo estamos ubicando mal. Mm -hmm. Teacher? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. teacher, we had a some <laughs> inconvenient with I... the last exercise with letter C. Mm hmm. Yeah, because uh, we don't find where exactly have have to join the sentences. I try to make for one side. I try to do for another side, for another way. But no, it's wrong. All our answer. Let me see the the original sentence. Uh, what what did you write? Yeah, I have already, um, I already key. delete. Okay, the exercise number one, a, a gaffer has to carry, carry out the lighting design. More, only, only put control Z, control Z. Oh yeah. There you go, okay. Okay, so let's take a look. Show me the sentence, a gaffer has to carry out Mm -hmm. The light, the lighting design works. Who works on a moon? So the gap has to carry out the lighting design. Oh, who? Ah, okay. All right. So I see. So we have a couple of areas that we need to try on. The first part is okay. So, do you remember how to use who, that, which, where? Uh, actually, I will remember. Maybe I I miss him. I miss him that that class. Okay. Maybe which which and that is for the object. Okay. The so thing or who is for for people, right? Right. Who yeah. Is for people? 
Okay. So that, you need to think about is the the reason that it's wrong is because uh, you are wrong. All of your sentences are 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 wrong. They're yeah. not written correctly. So you always if we look at the example, let's start at the example at the top. A newspaper clerk who has to do a lot of research, he or she is often uh, the new to journalism. Uh -huh. So first we start with the subject. What is the subject? In this case, a newspaper clerk. And yeah. then we put the comma mm -hmm. and we put in the in extra information. But you are not doing that. You are making a sentence and then you put who. So it's not logical. You need to put, for example, I say, like in Spanish, my student, Morena, is doing the exam. Um, uh huh. So no, my student... Uh, my student is doing the exam, Morena. Mm -hmm. Do you understand, More, or no? In this case, mm -hmm. a gaffer has... No, a gaffer? Mm -hmm. What is a gaffer? No, I'm not sure. Maybe a name. I'm not sure. It, it's in the sentence number two. A gaffer is number two. A gaffer, and then it tells you in sentence number two, what is the idea? A gaffer, comma who works on a movie or TV, or TV crew, and then the action. Who has? No, who works. I think uh, maybe, uh-huh. I have to delete the other uh, extra information. Uh-huh. You have to make, you have to join the two sentences into one. More, for example, where, More, where do you work? The name of the company. I'm yes. working on a, a concentrics. In concentrics. Okay. So, for example, Morena, who works in concentrics, is learning English. Mm-hmm. Who works in concentric is not necessary. This is extra information. Morena is learning English is the sentence. Together, Morena, who works in concentrics, is learning English. Mm -hmm. Like that. A gaffer, in this case, um, a gaffer, who oh, right? Mm -hmm. Who works... On a movie or TV crew. Correct. And then the and then the last part of the sentence. Uh, I have to write, have to carry out the lighting sign. Correct. There you go. Because yeah, it, but Two sentences in one. Mm -hmm. No, but where I can write the, the the extra information after TV crew. Uh -huh. The TV crew is the extra information. That's why it's in comma because it's extra information. So then you need the original sentence, the the information. Entonces, I'm so sorry. And so, um... so at the end of the sentence, you write the other information. So a gaffer, comma, who works on a movie or TV crew, comma, has mm -hmm. to carry out the lighting design. A gaffer who works has to carry out the lighting design. Comma, mm. right? That is a key. No, Mari. No, no. 
no, no, estás bien perdida. It's okay, more. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I think for maybe for this class, maybe you you didn't come or didn't learn, but no. Uh, right now it's just Think Marine. Don't worry, more. No, We're no, no. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. You have a you. You. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to help you. Don't worry. We're going to go back and we're going to answer it together so that way you can. Okay, okay. Do it. It's okay. 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 Okay, good job. I know that we had a little bit of issue with the last part in joining the sentences. I'm going to help you. Don't worry. Let's start by checking the answers first, and then we're going to try it. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here in the listening, the final version of a movie, what do we have? The last one is last. put together by the editor and director. Okay. Good. And here, number four, Cheryl says a good landscape photographer has to understand. How weather can I pick a photo? Okay, great. And then here, Ray doesn't recycle glass because? He doesn't get any money. Okay, he doesn't get any money. And the last one, Daniela bought a bike because she? Right side by side. Right side by side. Yes. Okay. So no. that one, uh -huh. no. uh -huh. exactly. That one uh -huh. no. wants to reduce traffic and the other ones are correct. So the final, the, ver the final version of the movie is put together by the editor and director. Number four was how weather can affect a photo. Here we have, he doesn't get any money. And the last one wants to reduce traffic. If you had a mistake, no problem. Correct it in your, uh, in your platform. Then we had the reading. Okay. After you read, what do you think is a good title for this movie or for this article? Uh, the second. Animated Animate. movie results, mm -hmm. in ticket sales and awards. Okay, great. Number two. Render in paragraph two means? Translate from row to final form. Okay. And three, cast means? It's actor for parts. Okay. Parts. And the last one, Adam many movies have had? A positive. A positive. Very good. So we can check those you should have. In order to get 100, those should be your answers, exactly like we said. Very good. Now, let's go for here, writing the words. Okay, what was number one? You should keep track of your computer files. You should keep track of your computer files, suggestion. Suggestion. Suggestion, okay, good. Um, if you do it again, you lose your job. Warning. 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 Good. You're so irresponsible, you lose everything. Pretty things. Pretty things. Criticism. Criticism. Good. Uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. Good. Criticism. Mm -hmm. And then number four. I forgot the scene. Yeah, uh, it wasn't your fault. Someone else deleted the file. Excuse, excuse, excuse. excuse. Mm -hmm. And five, you'll probably find the file in the trash on your computer. Prediction. 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 Very good. Now let's take a look down here. To prepare for a talk TV talk show, research has to. Be done. Be done. Be done. Be done. Mm -hmm. Good. Next, the selected people must. 
Be ranked. Be ranked. Okay. Be ranked in order of preference. The top choices are contacted. Are contacted. Are contacted. Okay. Are contacted to see if they can appear on the show. And the last one, if some of them are unavailable, the next people on the list are invited. Are invited. Very good. Please remember to always add the ED for regular verbs or past participle changes. Remember, always is the verb to be and then the verb in past participle. The regular verbs, ED, and the irregular verbs, we change. Okay, are we okay? Any questions? Okay, no questions. All right, let's go to the last part, which was, a, from the looks of it, the most difficult. Okay. My head. <laughs> <laughs> don't mm -hmm. worry, don't worry. Let me help you out. So here we have one sentence. A gaffer has to carry out the lighting design. Here we have the second sentence. He or she works on a movie or TV crew. Our job is to take the two sentences and then create one sentence. How can we create that? Using the words who, or we can use the words that. Mm -hmm. okay. We use who or that. So if we look at the example, we take the first sentence, we look at the subject. What is the subject? Ah, the newspaper clerk. Then the second sentence is our extra information. He or she works in an is often new to journalism. We take it and we eliminate he or she and we replace it with who. Because who is he or she? And then we add the extra information, the additional information. Finally, we put a comma and we add the second part of the sentence. So here, let's take a look. Our subject is a gaffer, okay? So I'm going to take that. I put a comma. Then I go to the second sentence. Here, I see it's for people. For people, I'm going to use who. And then I take the second part of the sentence. Works on a TV, on a movie or TV crew, okay? And I'm going to add it because this is our extra information. I put another comma and then I put the second part, the part that is important, has to carry out the lighting design. Okay. Let me put it there. <laughs> there. Oops. I guess I didn't copy it. Let me put, and then I'll read it to you so that you can see exactly how it would be there. So now the sentence is a gaffer who works on a movie or TV crew, and then another comma, has to carry out the lighting design, okay? Now let's try numbers two, three, four, and five together. Dialogue editors are sound technicians. They specialize in editing film scripts. What is the topic of the first sentence? Dialogue, Dialogue editors. Exactly, so I take the subject, dialogue editors, oh, comma. comma. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for people, right? How do yeah. I know here who? I see, and here? I know that these are people, so I'm going to use who. What is who? the extra information? Special, specialized in editing <laughs> film script. Exactly. Film scripts. Okay. The extra information, and I put another comma because this is extra, this is in the middle. Then I copy the information from the original. Our sound technicians. Mm -hmm. Our sound technicians. Exactly. Our sound technicians. And that's it. 
Okay. Okay. What about number three? Let's try number three. A property. Okay. A property ma here is going master. to be master. Mm -hmm. A property master, comma. Mm -hmm. Who? Okay, very good. Who handled by the actors. Who are handled. Who are handled by the actors. Okay. And then another comma. And the last part? For buying props. No, we have another verb. It's responsible. Exactly. We, always, we go from verb to, uh-huh, from verb to subject. Is responsible for buying crops. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oops, did I make a mistake? I think maybe I didn't copy. And that's it. What about number four? Critics. Critics mm -hmm. is the... Only the, the critic. Mm -hmm. Comma. Mm -hmm. Who sometimes see more than 10 movies a week. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Comma. Comma, good. Right. Film reviews. Exactly. Always we begin where the verb is because that is the important. The important part is where is the action. And that's it. And the last one. Producer, yes. Okay. Homer. He, Homer who? Because he's... Are, who are responsible okay. for the budget. Who are responsible for the budget. Mm -hmm. Comma. Comma. Aren't involved in shooting a film. Aren't involved in shooting a film. Okay. Now, if you saw, you have to follow the rules to make the sentence correctly. If you follow the correct form and the commas in the correct place. Teacher. You... Yes. I wrote the number two. Mm -hmm. Equal to you. To your form. But okay. I have a ground. Let's take a look. Let's check. In number two, we had... And nine. number three. Two and okay. three. Okay. So here in number... Let's take a look. Number two, only eliminate the comma. Why? The comma. Because here is not extra information. Here is necessary information. And number three, a property master. Two, uh huh. Who, a property master? Oh, and this one, no, this one is the, a property master is responsible for buying props that are handled by actors. The topic is not the property master, but the, the topic for the props. Okay, so here is going to be exactly because if we see that that's why here is no who is going to be that because we're talking about not the person, we're talking about the things that they buy. Oh, and I had double A. There you go. And the last one, we have executive producers. 
Now, the most important is when we practice this, this is important to review because it's like I was speaking with a partner. Is if is necessary or not necessary to make the idea of that, of that sentence. Okay, so we're gonna practice, we're gonna make sure that you have it correctly, you put it in, and tomorrow we review if you have any questions or check anything that is missing from you for you to get your okay. diploma. But okay. today, you should be complete and you should have your diploma tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank okay. you, teacher. Thank you. Have a good night. Good, good night. night. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.